So here I'm just going to write Eva and Chris. And look at that. It's created a formula, uh, taking just everything before the space, essentially. And this is not that easy a formula to write, so I'm going to press Apply. So my name is David Malayman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff. And this just got released to Excel Online. I don't usually use Excel Online myself, but there are some features that are so worth it because Excel Online does them and they're absolutely great and desktop doesn't do them yet. Another one which I've done a video on is in the review tab and check performance. Absolutely fantastic if you have a huge file and you don't know why that is going to fix that for you. But let's get going with this one. So um, in last, I'm going to write Lila and then Bevins and then look at that. So it's done a few things. It's known that I want to take lowercase apart from the first letter. And it also knows that I want the last two letters. I can press show formula. And I can ignore or apply. As you can see, this is not for the faint heart of this kind of formula. It uses proper, write, len, find. I could probably write one of these formulas, but honestly, I don't think I want to anymore now that it's doing this for me, which is great. Now, let's say that I don't want to keep this. I can press ignore and then it won't do that. And then I can type in JR and Benheim. And now it will create another one because now it thinks, well, he doesn't want everything after the first space, maybe just after the last space. So I press apply. There you go. How cool is that? So let's go to the next one. Now it does only work if you use a proper Excel table, uh, which you get to by doing either format as table and choose one here or insert table and then just press OK. And then you get the table design and you can choose a color that you like like that. Uh, now I can say something like Anita Kong capitals or Chinda Solina. So uppercase for the last name. There we go. Show formula. Perfect. Upper is uppercase. You can also select these and copy and paste the formula if you want to. Uh, as you can with general stuff in your browser. So then another one is here. We could say, and I often want to do this. I want to get the actual instruction out of the numbering. So I can say it like that. But actually, I don't want to type all this out. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. Control V. And then here I'm going to press delete. And then it still manages to work like that, which is pretty good. By the way, if you don't name your tables correctly, it might give you something like this, table 11. That often comes out after you press enter and you get this, but not always. It is good practice to name your tables after you create one. Go to table design and name this. So split out tasks. If you try doing spaces, it will tell you it cannot do that. It needs an underscore, but that's okay. So now let's look at some stuff that it can do with numbers, dates, and row numbers, which are pretty cool. And then let's look at other stuff that it can't do and stuff they can get wrong. So let's multiply these numbers together. So five, and this is going to be also six. This one I can do minus, so five minus one is four. It can do any kind of arithmetic, but it cannot do any sums. There you go, apply. Uh, it can also do rounding and banding, which is really cool. So rounding, I can say 90,000 and 14,000, and there you go. Show formula, so this is using the round function. And I really like this one. I just noticed this just because I tried it. But if I can do 70 to 80 and 40 to 50, and there we go. How cool is that? And this is not an easy formula to write, um, but I really, really like it. Great. Dates. So over here, you can do weekday. So I can say this is a Thursday, this is a Friday. I looked these up, by the way and this is a Wednesday, and then press show formula, so it's just getting the date. This is one way to write it. There are other ways to do the same formula, but that is a fairly efficient way. Or I can do the month, the full month, like August, and then June, and then there we go. Show formula, also using the text function, which I quite like, but it hasn't got it quite right there, but I think that's a bug in the software because the formula is right. So sometimes, that can cause issues, but it will get it right. So here we are in row numbers next, and this is pretty cool. I could do one, two, and there we go. Show formula. Now it does row um, of the current one. That's why there's nothing in the brackets, minus 37. And I'm gonna press apply. I don't actually love this one because if someone was to insert 
then suddenly it starts at four, which is not really what you want. I would prefer to amend this and do minus row, open bracket, click on the header row, and then this will be always the headers of the table called row numbers, that's what that means. So in table design, that's what it's called. You can amend it, so if it's just called row in, for example, now the formula says rowing like that. <laughs> so here, I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to do 1A to C, C for Chinda, and there we go, show formula. Again, it does minus 37, but it's pretty cool that it can combine that with something in the current row. So it can take something comparing the rows in the entire column with combined with the current row. And here, another thing it can do is, for example, 2023, this year, and I can also say 2021. And I can also say 2019. And there we go. It will do it and it will number it and go plus 2099. So essentially it starts at this year and it takes away two every time, which is pretty cool. So things that I currently cannot do are if formulas, lookups across tables or aggregations. Like it can do this column plus that column, but it can't do a sum of these columns and write sum or write average. Uh, I haven't been able to get it to do that. But there is another feature that does that, and we'll look at that in formula suggestions, which is not quite the same, but it's still pretty cool and still uses kind of AI. So here we've got some things that I've noticed it gets wrong. So uh, Albania, Finland, Hungary. So here I can say Albania, Finland, Hungary. Enter, and here I'm going to say Andorra, Spain, Czechia. Enter, and then here it does this, and I'm going to press apply. But notice that it's tried to combine all of them, and in this one where there's only one, it doesn't make sense. So it's just got these extra commas for no reason. In that case, you can just copy it and paste special as values, and then you can manually delete it uh, if, if this is going to happen. Or you could if you wanted to write a formula yourself, but it's a pretty complicated formula. In this one, it combines it, but wrong. This was interesting for me. So Eva buys games, and Chris buys clothes, enter. Looks right, but if I go to apply, I noticed here it says Tim by P, Christy by P, soap. So what's the formula actually doing? It's adding in the custom word by, and then adding that with the right, the last letter on the right of the product. Now in many of these, that's an S, so that works with buys, but, with soap, it doesn't. So this is actually giving me the wrong one. So what you should do is remove that, press buys, and now we've fixed the issue. So if you're gonna use this, kind of like if you're gonna use ChatGPT or other AI to write formulas for you, just have a little bit of skepticism that you might get it wrong, and just check it yourself. All right, let's go to formula suggestions. So here, I've got FY 11, 12, 13, 14, and I've got just the word lowest like that. If I just write equals here, it's going to suggest that I want the min function. This is the minimum, aggregates all of these and takes the lowest number. I can just press that to lock it in. But if I didn't want that, I wanted, um, this one says, for example, average. Now if I write equals, it will give me an average. If I write, for example, uh, mean, it knows mean is an average, so it gives me an average. Or total equals, doesn't know what to do there and sum will give me a sum, like that. If you don't write anything, then it won't give you anything, but if you start writing sum, it will suggest all of these and even give you an idea of what that will be. It doesn't have to be directly in front, it could also be equals sum, like that. It even knows that 2011 is not to be included, which is pretty cool, a lot of other software would not have done that. Great, so that's what I wanted to show you with this video, that's called formula suggestions. Annoyingly, you can't activate these on demand, which I wish you could, particularly formula by example, I think would be so cool if you could activate by demand, like you can activate flash fill by demand here. So if you enjoyed this video, then my name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you like this kind of content. Thanks for watching.